So as you look uh, at the situation now, we are perhaps in between crises, right on the doorstep of the transition economies in Western Europe. The Euroland is in crisis and many people here and around the world fear that that could have very, very profound negative repercussions. We've seen even political changes in Hungary and other things. Uh, are you, first of all, has the crisis to date, the last 18 months that surrounded Greece and the peripheral economies, is that already transmitting? It is already transmitting. And of course, again, why it's particularly interesting to look at what happened in 2006 and 2010 to these households is because we are now facing a, 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 the prospect of a new crisis hitting the region. And it's already visible. We didn't so, see it so much yet in growth numbers, but when we look at various indicators, the confidence, the look at orders in the manufacturing sector, we look at credit uh, availability, all those measures uh, point to a, a new crisis. We don't know how deep yet, but it can be potentially very deep given what's happening in the Eurozone. We should remember these countries are tremendously dependent on, on what's happening in the Eurozone because of uh, foreign direct investment. These countries have benefited a lot from foreign direct investments coming out of Western Europe. Uh, they have uh, very strong links through the financial system. Most of the countries have maybe 80, 90 percent of their banking system owned by foreign banks. But there are also you know, other links, labor markets and so on. So that there are very fundamental linkages. And of course, what happens to the Eurozone affects not only sort of financial aspect, but it also is that's been their destiny. You know, these countries wanted to come back to Europe, and that was what drove the political process, the, the economic process, and, and it was overriding all other conflicts and, 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 and divisions within society that everyone, more or less, in these societies wanted to join Europe. Well, they always say, I think it's Groucho Marx, that uh, you've got to be careful of it about joining any club that would accept you. Yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that's right. So, so, so what you can say is, is that uh, actually these countries still want to join the Euro. I mean, this uh, may sound, given what's going on in the Eurozone now, uh, completely perverse, but actually it's very understandable. Uh, it's they, for them, this is a, a, a way to uh, become part of, of, of a, you know, a developed community, a part to get the better macroeconomic framework. Of course, they, I don't think they, no one wants to join Today, they want these problems to, that we see but in the Eurozone. It helps, helps them modernize. and helps, helps them, them modernize, it helps them stabilize, uh, bring down uh, risk levels, uh, you know, very fundamental things to get the economy uh, going. But you have countries like Poland. You go to Poland today, it's, uh, it's a marvel in terms of, uh, you know, the, the attitude, the energy. Uh, they did very well in the, in the global financial crisis. Uh, they um, had, uh, you know, they still want to take an active part in Europe, they want to be part of shaping Europe. You go then to countries maybe in Southeast Europe or to Ukraine, and so you see a completely different picture where, where you know, they have very little hope of any time soon uh, joining the, the European uh, Union. They have, uh, you know, the, in Southeast Europe, the impact of the Greek crisis. Um, Ukraine is sort of stuck in, in, in transit and doesn't really know where to go. There's a lot of political divisions. They don't have a strong anchor. To, to, to go to like the uh, European Union because they, they know this is not in the cards for, for the moment. Mm -hmm.